Welcome to this video lecture on the concept of arrays in C language. I am Smita Suresh Daniel, Assistant Professor, St. Thomas College, Bhilai. Today we are going to learn from Unit 3 for BCA first year, that is arrays and structures in C. In the first class, we will learn about the arrays in C language. So far, we have used only the fundamental data types like character, int, float, double, etc. They have been used only to handle limited amount of data. In many applications, however, we need to handle a large volume of data in terms of reading, processing and printing, etc. To pro process such large amounts of data, we need a powerful data type that would facilitate efficient storing, accessing and manipulation of data items. C supports a derived data type known as array that can be used for such applications. An array is a fixed size sequenced collection of elements of the same data type. It is a simple grouping of like type data. In the, its simplest form, an array can be used to represent a list of numbers or a list of names. Since an array provides a conven convenient structure for representing data, it is classified as one of the data structures. It is a sequenced collection of related data items that share a common name. For instance, we can use an array named salary to represent a set of salaries of a group of employees. As we can see on the screen, the array is looks somewhat like this with five blocks of elements. Each block is having an index. The name of the array starts from the first index. An array is a variable that can store multiple values. For example, if you want to store 100 integers, you can create an array for it as int data 100. As we write 100 here, an array named data will be created whose first indices starts from data 0 to data 100, which is the last block of array. So this is a construction of an array. We will learn about the various working of arrays to initialize it and to access elements of an array with the help of example. First of all, we will learn how to declare an array. The syntax for declaring an array is shown here as the data type, array name and the array size. We can create similar data types in, a, in each array. So if you take a data type as float, we want to store five uh, values. So we can give a name to an array and we have to predefine the size as 5. Here we declare an array mark. The name of the array is mark of floating point type. It has a size of 5 meaning it can hold 5 floating point values. This is stored somewhere in the memory. Each block is having an address and in this address, we have to store the value. For example, if we want to initialize an array, 
this is the way to create an array suppose an array marks five so five elements can be stored directly in this way you can also initialize an array without giving the size but automatically the compiler will calculate the number of items stored in it now the first block will be called as mark 0 which stores 19 and marks 1 which stores 10 similarly all the values can be indexed and called by the index number now if you want to access an array element we have to access the element of an array by its indices for example if you want to access the third element in the block so what we have to call it by the indices number it starts from zero the first block will be called as mark zero the second one mark one and similarly till the last block so if you want to call the third element we will call it as mark 2 so this is the way one more thing is that the array size will be same for all the blocks and the memory location where it is stored will have an address in sequence So how to initialize an array whenever we are making a program we have to declare an array with the size as shown here now if you want to change the value of an array element suppose already we have an integer array with the following values so if you want to change the third element just write the name of that block as mark 2 is equal to minus 1 this statement will automatically replace the original value of 8 with minus 1 similarly if you want to change the value of the fifth element to 0 then we have to count from the indice number 0 1 2 3 and 4 so this will be the element mark 4 is equal to 0 so we can see that the value changes to 0 we can also use many many uh, input and output statements for array elements for example we cannot put a large number number of items into an array directly so we you can use a loop to access these elements so whenever we want to make a loop or if you want to directly store we can use the scanf statement the scanf statement can take the input for a particular uh, block by using the name of the block and its indices like percent d and percent marks 2 whatever value is stored uh, stored by the scan uh, stored by the user that will be stored in marks 2 similarly if you want to print a particular value in a block we can refer to that block with the array name and its indice and we can get the result uh, using printf printf person d will print whatever is the content inside marks zero similarly all these statements will uh, point to a particular indice and the content stored in it we would like to explain the use of an array with an example let's input five values from the user and store it in an array the main function 
will accept five values so the initial data structure is to be provided as int an array name values with five blocks of elements we need to five we need to store five values so five is written here similarly printf enter five integers is a message given to the user to input five values so for storing five values we need to use an array of five iteration so this is starting from i is equal to 0 i is less than 5 and scan of person d ampersand value i the value of i for this array changes from 0 to 5 sorry 0 0 to 4 and all the four uh, five values will be accepted by the scanf and stored in a sequence in the array starting from 0 to 4 once it is stored it has stored all the values in this loop now we can display these integers by a simple statement of for loop which will automatically iterate from i is equal to 0 to 4 and we can get a printf statement to output the values as shown here value i this is a variable which will change from 0 to 4 and automatically whatever is stored in each of the block will be pr printed in a sequence so let's see the output of this program the output is shown here enter five integers you have entered five integers one after the other all are stored in a sequence similarly when you display the content of an array values you can see the same values which has been stored in a sequence here we used a for loop to take five inputs and to store them in an array then again the for loop was displaying all the contents of the array this is another example where we are you finding the average of n numbers using an array we want to store n numbers into an array so we create suppose n is equal to 10 so you have to create an array called marks 10 when you create marks 10 10 blocks of elements will be created where you can store 10 values. So enter the number of elements. So we can give the exact number. So this will range from 0 to n. Suppose we want to store 10 elements or even less than 10 elements. This will make a program. Like printf enter number person d. Here we can see the user is asked to uh, asked to enter values as soon as the user enter values the array marks i marks i value of i is first time 0 second time 1 2 and 3 the indices will change from 0 to n and each time the user inputs a value it will be stored in a sequence and now as soon as the user stores uh, stores a value in an array that can be added marks i marks i will add each marks and then it will store it in a value known as sum this can also be written as sum is equal to sum plus marks i the average you get the total sum and then we can calculate the average by dividing it by the number of elements so the printf statement will show you the average this is the output for the program you have entered five elements average has been calculated sometimes 
uh, if we declare the array as 10 size but we keep on entering data so an error will be shown as elements out of bounds means the element does not exist after 9 so 0 to 9 will be the indices but above that it will not accept any value and it will provide an error there are this is all about we have uh, learned in single dimensional array similarly we have multi-dimensional array also which works in a similar way but a little difference is there the multi-dimensional array may have a two dimension and a three dimensional array with which will be shown in the example here this is column 1, column 2, column 3 and 4. Similarly, each row will be having a number of items. So, we can have a subscript as row and columns. So, this is the way we have to name the array. For example, the name of the array is considered as X. X has 3 rows and 4 columns. So, always when we are using a multidimensional array, the subscript will be 3 and 4. That is row numbers and the column numbers. So, this will def define an array having 3 columns and 4, sorry, 3 rows and 4 columns. X is a two-dimensional array 2D. So, we can think the array as a table with three rows and four columns. Similarly, we can also declare a three-dimensional array with three dimensions which can hold 24 elements. A 2D array can also be declared as shown here. For example, we have an array named C. So, INT, C, row number and column number. So, there are two rows and three columns which will be specified in this way. Each row, this is the first row and this is the second row. And each has three columns and it will be arranged in, in a 2 into 3 matrix format. This can also be defined in this way also. It will automatically will be visualized as a 2 into 3 matrix. Initialization of 3D array is also as shown here. Let's make a small program to store the temperature of two cities in a week and display it using a two-dimensional array. These are the variables city and week. There are two cities and weekdays are 7. So, we need to create a array called temperature city week. We have two, two rows and seven columns in this particular array. So, we need first of all when we create it everything is blank and this temperature is a 2 into 7 matrix format where each block will be used for storing the values. Now for storing the rows as well as column we have to use a nested loop. The outer loop, outer loop will be used for 
the number of cities and the inner loop will be used for the number of days in a week. So the outer loop for the first city is used and as soon as it in enters into the inner loop it will take seven days of the week seven times this loop will be repeated for accessing the value temperature so this loop will accept 2 into 7 14 values similarly for displaying we also require two loops one for the city number of cities and the other for the number of days so you need to access all the values using a printf and a scanf statement and to display the values you need a printf statement so this particular program will store 2 into 7 values and print the values also this is the output all the values are entered city 1 7 times 7 days in a week and city 2 7 days in a week while displaying also it has shown the content stored in it thank you